Hey guys, Trent at Black Horse Ranch, and today we're gonna be joined by Ed Carson of Granby Post and Beam, so we can go through the barn and show them what we've got and try to fix our bearing wall issue. So hopefully you join us today, and hopefully you enjoy it. Hey guys, so this is Ed Carson and Landon, his son, uh, from Granby Post and Beam, and uh, they're gonna come in and take a look at what we got going on here and see if they can help us out any. So, um, so Ed, tell us a little bit about what you guys do. And Well, we're a timber frame company and do post and beam work. Been in business for about 30 years now. And uh, Landon's come up through the business. My son, he's, he's our timbersmith now. Okay. And uh, yeah, we basically travel. We do a lot of our work in Idaho and, and uh, Alaska and Western Canada. So you guys do your own design as well as uh, making the, the timber. Absolutely, we do our own harvest as well. Okay. So we go out and log, we look for big dead fir, is what we use. And uh, yeah, we do our own milling and, and select stuff from there. And uh, yeah, and build the timber frames. So. Great, all right, well, we'll take them inside and, and we'll get going. To start chewing up and, and plumbing the walls and stuff, and that's when I started noticing that the outside the was banging. So, and is that a crawl space or have you got it filled? It's a crawl space. Okay. Um, there's two pony walls that go oh, down okay. this direction. Oh, I there's can see point. a timber there, so basically lined up with that. Basically, yeah. yeah. I, I I didn't measure off of what was existing. I I basically made the distance between the stem walls. I made the distance even the three bays, I guess, going oh, okay. back between the foot. So, and I don't even remember, it wasn't a perfect measurement, I don't remember what it was for the center, but those will be, you know, what we can use for bearing, obviously the, the perimeter. But, uh, yeah, so, I guess, come on in. Yeah, yeah. let's have a look. And I, I mean, I've read about it, and I've read that's common with this, you know, having the knee wall up above the floor. Um, it is, it is, pony wall, but, uh, well, a pulley wall would, would be a separate wall, but the way it's, uh, it, you know, just extended up, it's almost to be expected. And typically when these old barns, when they break, it's at the ridge, they get this broken back, you know, okay. they break right up the ridge, but the walls stay in. So, so I, mean, I mean, you're getting a little bit of deflection, but honestly, I don't see a, a, a big structural issue. You can do some tying. That's why I was asking you what you were going to do. Are you going to do another floor? Yeah, so basically what we're going to do is I'm going to use, I'm going to put ledger boards up with structural lags and yeah. studs and then hang the joists off of that. And hopefully that's, I mean, to replace this here, I mean, maybe we need steel Well, pipes. no, I think that that's a good way. That's why I asked, because you could use your floor as your, yeah. to pull it in, right? Yeah, I mean, so uh, what yeah. I would be doing is you could take a little, it's going to bear, like these have their, like they've been doing this for years, so mm -hmm. they're going to have a memory, right? Yeah. To actually pull it back in is going to be hard to do. You would be, be uh, really. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. pulling it back in. See, yeah. I want, I want it to stay. I don't want to get more deflection. Yeah. So that was my big concern. And then also where we're going to cut studs and put windows and doors in. That wall we're not doing anything to. This one we were going to have a window and a door and a window. And so then, you know, the leverage, I don't have as much support coming down. If I'm just tying up there. Yeah, I think the floor in first. Yeah, okay. That will pull out. That will hold it. It's not going to go anywhere from there. Okay. With the, the strength of the double top plate. Yeah, okay. Well, where is, so you're taking this floor out? Yeah, sure. yeah, so the new floor is basically going right back, almost in the same spot. So, but it'll be two by eights. You know, these, I didn't want to have such a bouncy floor. So, are you going to put any pillars in here? Um, there'll be a wall here, so I'll have a beam that goes from the front wall to this wall, and then another beam that goes from this wall to the back. And then my floor joist will just span like 10 feet, less yeah, than 10 feet. same on that side. Yeah, that side has a wall for bearing. Yeah. Except right, like right under, over where my wife's standing, that'll be a beam there as well. And then, yeah. So I think here's the floor plan. So if we're looking like this, here I might have a beam going across right there. Or, um, 
I'll figure that out when I get there. Well, I'm basically seeing if you know if you're gonna stick with the same basic structure, right? Yeah. Because that's what the barn. That's what it was built around. Basically, except so up in the second floor, there's gonna be a loft, and there was. We took one out. It was one they had built, and it was poorly built. Like it had 16 foot long two by sixes that weren't supported by anything other than the like the ridge joist or the end joist, you know, rim joist. It's actually amazing that what it will hold. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I've seen that for years in different barns. Yeah, you yeah, know, I mean, bigger barns that have just the same thing, and they, you know, hundred years plus. Yeah, and they're still there. No, and this was added after yeah. the fact. You know, it was yeah. all. And you've gone to a metal roof, so now you're going to have no weight up there. Yeah. A lot of the old barns would have shingle or shake. Yeah. Which and the stays and the snow would stay on. Yeah. So it loads. Yeah. No, it sheds pretty good. Um, so we have the loft, and that's one thing I should have drawn the outline over here, but um, so it, it'll come part way out, and so I will have to put in some kind of posts and some kind of. The, the joists previously that we took out were going this direction, so. Um, That's why I was asking you if your, if, you know, your support under the floor was lined up with the timber. Yeah, it's going to be. I mean, on the first floor yeah. it is yeah. for sure. Yeah. The second floor, you know, we're going to be a little bit more creative, but. Um, so, like the post that holds up the loft is going to have to be back. So it comes down on top of this interior wall. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know if the interior wall is good enough to support just the loft, the weight of the loft. Well, it's, if it's built as a bearing wall, yeah. Okay. As long as it's, as long as I don't need to carry a post all the way down to a footing or anything like that. Not unless it's a point load. Not unless you're picking up a point load on it. I mean, a wall will bear a floor, but if you've got a point load, then you need a, a bearing point. So there will be, like, so to hold up, there'll be. For the loft, I'm gonna do beams this direction, so there'll be a beam, you know, where the floor meets the sloped rafters. Mm -hmm. And so in the wall, we'll support one end of the beam, and then there'll be a post out here. Mm -hmm. So there will be a point load. Well, that should, right? yeah, you should okay. carry it down unless you're, unless you, when you build your floor, you know, you can put an LVL or however you're gonna do it, you have a built up, Okay. Beam so that it can land on, so you actually have instead of like a double top plate, I put in. Yeah, so. you put in a. Okay. You know, you build up your your floor joist. And would I need to make that run the full length of the wall, or would it just be? E well, no, because you're spanning. Okay. You you could create a span. I just need to go from foundation to pony wall. That's right, okay. and have you know enough beef in your beam okay. to pick up your point load. There's not going to be a lot of weight on the floor up there. No. You know, yeah. all your roof load is transferred to your walls, so it's just the floor. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. because I don't like and that, small crawl spaces. And I'm gonna, well, it doesn't matter, I guess, but we're gonna insulate the foundation walls. It's gonna be sealed. So yeah. there. Well, and then just any point loads that come down on your beam, you just gotta add your two by six studs in, right? Right. To uh, pick that up. Yeah, and then cross bracing between the, or extra floor joists, right? Like a double or a triple floor e, joist? Yeah, you may have to do the, anywhere you have a support wall, you'll have to at least double your floor joist. Yeah. Okay. Just for your shear. And then for a support wall too, if you're, if you're concerned about it, you could sheet it with plywood before you do your sheet rock. Oh, okay. And then it creates a beam. It actually creates a beam itself. A okay. box beam, it's called. So you wouldn't have to do like a header on the wall then, or would you still do that? You, you, I'd just do a double header. Okay. Just do a double and then 
but if you sheet it with your plywood and then your sheet rock, okay. it's a beam itself. Okay. The whole the whole structure. But we we're just commenting too. It's they actually made an error when they built the barn. Oh yeah. Your rafters. Your rafter should be right above studs. your studs. Oh yeah. And you know because that would have made it so easy to brace, and now it's all out of sync. Yeah. No, and the studs aren't. 24 inches either they're they're random yeah so some are some are close to 24 some are like closer to 28 and then there's like everything in between well i worked with an old swiss guy one time that they did and he you know in the swiss you know with those chalets and stuff a lot of that they didn't use tape on like measuring tape oh really they would mark a string they would just mark a string and uh, that was their mark yeah they'd go off the mark so that wouldn't surprise me if they did it the same way here. Yeah. You know, they just use the same string all the time. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> they had I made their own. You know, just regular two by sixes, which I would like to replace with something more aesthetic. Um, and maybe even go every four feet instead of every two, so a bigger member. Is that doable, do you think? Well, I would consider because we doing it as as like an architectural feature instead yeah. of a instead of a structural feature. Like if you're worried about the structure there, you could double those. But any beams that you put in, put in below it, just for looks. Just for looks, because yeah. then you can attach to those. Yeah. Then and it's you know it just we're doing spray foam insulation, so I was gonna just keep it open all the way to the peak, uh -huh. and then have those be. And I'm not, I'm not worried about like what he's done necessarily. If we were going to be on those, then maybe I would make do something bigger than that. I don't remember that span is 16 feet or something. But well, then, yeah, they, they uh, got the hangers on it. They do, yeah. So you know. And then up here, we're not leaving the furnace up there. It's going to come. Well, we're not having a furnace. We're doing splits, mini splits, because there's no place to route ductwork. The ductwork they routed was just. It was horrible. The, the first floor would stay very cold, and the upstairs would be boiling hot, <laughs> which is typical. Yeah. Seems like, but so anyway, that was one thing that we went round and round about with the heating and cooling. I wanted to put in the geothermal system in use, but that's so expensive. And yeah. Since this isn't our primary residence, like none of the tax rebates or anything help. You know, there's a USDA. Um, grant you can get and you can get a loan but it has to be for your farm operation so it's for big ag you know like that's right yeah no it doesn't work either so. yeah so so yeah yeah i don't i don't see any issue with that i mean just make it a feature we do a lot of we've done a lot of homes where we go in and retrofit a frame okay you know, it's the same type of thing yeah none of it is support it's just for it's looks, just yeah. for looks it's just to give it that the aesthetic so the other thing also is you know the only support for that transition other than the angle are these double two by sixes that come down and they sit on the top plate yeah and then on this side they've cut it and so and they haven't resupported um but you yeah, know i'm gonna rebrace this Anyway, sorry, I interrupted. Well, no, I mean, so, I mean, there's nothing in the middle. And, like, if you, when we set this back down on the foundation, all of the wall sides at the eave went straight. But if you look up there, there's still a sag on that double, that plate. I would be interested to see what, like, even if it's just aesthetic. Um, but what I was thinking, basically, was putting beams, like, underneath those plates up there. Uh -huh. And maybe like a couple of cross members, or I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. And then just transferring that down. Yeah, we just call that kind of a horizontal purlin system. Okay, you know that that's easy enough to do. And I mean, yeah. so it gives it all that. I don't know what the I have at home, like in in, in Canada, like all our old courthouses are done that way. They've got flat ceilings, but they've got these purlins. They got beams running across, yeah. and then they fill them in with smaller members again. You know, say going from say eight by eight to four by fours. Yeah, kind of thing. 
was all real simple, really attractive, but uh, and stout. But so, like, if you, I don't know, I mean, I'd be interested to see if you came up with something, you know, to support the loft, and then basically continue. Are you going to do any more detailed plans or anything? I'm or? not, no. But I mean, like, if you were going to do something, that, whatever you need to do. Yeah, I would. It, it would have to be more detailed. Take some measurements. Yeah, I mean, this is an AutoCAD, so I can send you that, and it's all yeah. based on real measurements. Yeah. Um, some of the stuff. I mean, the walls and are all real measurements, but have you got a section drawing? Yeah. Like, I mean, I see us doing, you know. Uh, there's not a whole lot going into it, but we could certainly do drawings, mm -hmm. and you probably source the timbers here. Okay. You know, would be the Cheaper economically than... that would be the best thing to okay. do. And you then know? you could do details on like how to how to connect them and all that kind of That's stuff. That's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, yeah, and I mean it all has to definitely because of the age of the barn and different measurements. And, you know, it's all going to be fitted here. Right, right. You know, so you need some kind of, you know, really you got to build the floor first and then go up. Yeah, that's from what there. So you always have something to stand on and scaffold from. And, and, and even if we're doing, depends on some of the heavier beams, how you're actually going to get them up there. Right. You know, yeah. You're going to use some kind of uh, mini lift or, or you know, or, or even a block and tackle. Yeah. Get them up there. Well, even some of those drywall lifts and something like that will do it. Okay. You know, because they'll, they'll like. So, yeah, we should. We'll figure something out. <laughs> well, no, said, yeah, well, you got a good base. That's the thing. You know, yeah. looking underneath, you got a good base. So, but it's uh, really with this, as you know, it's build as you go just kind of an idea of what I was thinking in 3D, like with beams and posts. Oh yeah, that works too. And then you can be like, well, this won't work, or you know, let's move this here, or whatever, you know, you can, but at least it'll kind of give you, I, I couldn't explain it very well when we were in there, so. And I no, no, that's all good. Anything, but... I mean, it's just, it's a good project. Yeah. Yep. And it's always adjustment. Yeah. As you know. Yeah. I mean, it's been like that, you know, every step of the way we've found things that we kind of have to stop and think and... All right, guys, so we happened to time it just right with Ed. He was actually coming down into the area to look at some of his other jobs that are going to start this spring. And so we just happened to hit it right and he was able to stop by and check things out. So good news, um, he looked at the walls and he said, yeah, you've got some deflection there. He said, but they're sound. So he wasn't worried about them. Uh, he said there's we don't need to do anything to um, reinforce them or fix them or you know unbend them which we weren't going to unbend them but I just didn't want them to bend further so he said he said everything looked fine and so what we did do is we talked through some of the floor plan which we got and uh, when we get that nailed down we'll show you guys we'll, we'll do a floor plan reveal at some point um, but he's gonna go back and he's gonna help us design a beam system uh, we have to we have some beams that we have to put in uh, to carry the loft and things like that but um, adding a beam system in will will enhance the look substantially so um, we're gonna look at doing something with with the loft and then continuing that up um, into the, the ceiling not necessarily for a necessary structural support but just for um, you know looks for aesthetics so we're pretty excited about that. He gave me a lot of good pointers on uh, um, bringing loads down, point loads and stuff. If I have beams uh, upstairs that don't line up with uh, our footings, uh, our foundation on the outside or our, our pony wall footings in the middle. So that was good. A lot of good information, just a really helpful guy. So I really appreciate him coming up here and uh, taking some of his time out to help us out. Head on over to postbeam.com. That's where you can find Ed and uh, Granby Post and Beam. So that's postbeam.com. And check out what he's got going on. He's got some really cool uh, kits that you can get and that kind of thing, but he also does custom work like this. So go check Ed out. Um, so we'll get some measurements. We'll get some information sent over to Ed. And uh, but other than that, we're gonna make some progress on the barn here coming up. So. Thanks for watching guys and uh, stay tuned.